Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Last time I painted Malagas the Twisted and I enjoyed it so much and I did get a few requests for a Sons of Horus Contemptor and you know what, this time I just had to oblige. I absolutely loved painting Malagurst, probably the most enjoyable thing I've painted for quite some time. I don't know why. And uh, yeah, the Contemptor I think is probably my favourite walker. I know the Leviathan is fantastic, but I think the Contemptor is the classic. And also, if you remember last time, I quickly showed an old Contemptor Dreadnought I painted quite a few years ago. And I thought, I've got to redo this. I've got to do a new version, see if one, my skills have improved, but also like my change in style. It was quite bright, quite edge highlighty, that old Contemptor. And this one I wanted to be my version of Grimdark. So I know some people might not think how I paint is very Grimdark, but it's kind of heavily weathered and uh, that sort of thing. So this is my take on the Grimdark style. Actually, the most influential thing for me on this project is the plates in the Forge World books. And there's several of these, but the one that was most important was this classic Contempt Dreadnought, which I think is from book one, so the very first Heresy Black Book. And yeah, this is the take on the Sons of Horus Contemptor. There are a few things I'd never really noticed before, but one of these were the legs were actually in the green colour and then the hip plates on the top were in black, but I always paint the legs silver or, or something like that and I thought, you know what, this looks so much better in the, uh, the colour of the Legion, so I knew I was going to take this on board, have the black plates, actually have the legs in green and that would make a big difference to the overall composition of the scheme, I thought. In fact, I didn't want to include much silver at all. I really prefer things when they're in black as opposed to silver, so I wanted to keep the metallic elements to a minimum. I think a lot of areas we just paint silver by default, but this little plate where it had the green legs got me thinking about that. And then I also looked at some other pictures of weapons and stuff like that, which we'll talk about when I paint the Kerry's Assault Cannon. I always admired these colour plates and to be honest when I was first into the hobby and looking at these books I didn't really understand why they were so good. I knew it was difficult to replicate them on marines because basically getting the highlights fine and you know all the detail on the legs basically meant you'd have to spend loads of time with the brush on every single marine so I didn't feel it's possible to replicate it exactly for an army on every marine but a dreadnought's obviously much bigger so we can kind of get a lot of the shading and these volumes with the airbrush which would knock a lot of the uh, time off. Looking at the plate I can see most of the model is actually in shadow and I think that's why it looks so cool so looking at the left of the torso it's mostly kind of black really and on Malagurst, I use Sons of Horus mixed with black to create the shadows, which work better than the saturated Lupercal green that uh, Games Workshop make. So I knew with the success of Malagurst that this was the way I was going to go, and that entire area was going to be this Sons of Horus and black mix, getting it nice and desaturated. Then looking at the chest, there's quite a bright highlight, and this would be the green sky and Sons of Horus highlight I again used on Malagurst. I think it's really interesting how small this air of highlight is, as in how much of the model is this bright colour, but it does change the overall feel of the model drastically, and that's just around, yeah, that kind of uh, chest area there. There is a small bit on the shins where there's some highlights and some areas, but yeah, really there's not a lot of this highlight, and it really changes the feel of it. I think to keep it evil looking and grim dark, most of it has to be in shadow, but I could afford to push the highlights a little bit. And that's why I say this is my interpretation of the grim dark style, because I want it to be heavily weathered, mostly dark, desaturated, but I think we can afford to push some highlights here, and that makes it look more like these plates we kind of love in the books. I think the other reason these things look really cool is they are heavily textured. 
So when we look at sort of each individual part, it is not plain colour. Everything has loads of texture and that's going to be lots of stippling, I think, with the greens, lots of little subtle damage. So yeah, that was one of my key objectives, I think, was to try and get in a lot more texture than I would normally paint. You know, instead of airbrushing and then just putting a little bit of damage in, I think it's going to have to be quite a bit of brushwork to do this. But ultimately, I want this look, so I'm going to have to put the effort in. It's quite a bit of rambling before actually getting into the video, but I do think it's important because this was kind of my objective with the whole tutorial. So looking at these plates and kind of understanding them would help me, but also I want to explain to you why I'm doing it in this way. And it's really to try and get closer to the look of these books as I can. And I think those of you who are really into the heresy will probably get what I mean. And we're always trying to replicate this amazing art we get given. So I hope that you uh, appreciate my quest and my long rambling at the beginning. So here's a shot of the model before primer. And you can see it's actually got some conversion work. I did do this model a long time ago. I actually built this for a Space Wolf army. I failed, standard procedure. But uh, I decided that I could use this for Sons of Horus with the whole Lupercal theme. Uh, obviously, Horus has the wolf on it. I thought I could get away with it with some conversion work. I removed any Space Wolf bits like the runes and sanded them off. And where I sanded off these runes, I had to just use Millie part and green stuff to smooth it out. And then I did spend uh, a fair bit of money buying a Malagurst just for the spare parts on the banner which seems a little, you know, pricey, but uh, I thought it'd be worth it. So I used the top of the banner to replace the wolf one on the top. And I actually managed to cut off and remove some of the skulls on chains and they slotted in fairly well to the sides. So yeah, I think that's quite successful. And I think as so long as I write Lupercal on the banner somewhere, I can get away with it. I was really tempted to do this Lunar Wolves I love uh, painting white, so that would have been really cool. But ultimately, my favourite thing on Malagurst was doing the sea green and finally getting a sea green that I liked after many years of trying. So uh, I couldn't waste that, but maybe we'll do some Lunar Wolves one day. So let's finally get on with the painting. But I did think that intro was important. And uh, I used grey primer, and that's because I'm using an automotive primer from Halfords here in the UK, if you have that. And basically, this primer sticks very, very well to resin, which when you're using Forge World, you know, we, we need it to stick. And, and I think it will uh, be better than Chaos Black. But then I'm going to spray it black anyway. So either way around, just go for the primer you like, but we want it black in the end. So I'm pre-highlighting now with Tamiya White, and I'm still not sure whether this is worth it for the Sons of Horus scheme. It could save time just spraying Sons of Horus green straight over grey, actually, and just getting a really nice, opaque, clean coat all over. And that's because I'm going to do a lot of shading later, uh, you know, with a mix of Sons of Horus green and black. But... I do think it's kind of worth doing this black and white step because if anything, you get to practice where the highlights are, you know, what you're going for and, and what look you want to do. So I don't think it takes that long. It could be a superfluous step, but I kind of like it as a, a warm up or a practice just to see if your volumes are going to work, basically. I think ideally I'd like to use black primer out of the can and then just do a quick spray of Tamiya Flat White to practice where the highlights are going to be and that's going to be it. But I do really like the look of uh, where the highlights have gone on the tubular parts like uh, the Kerry's Assault Cannon and the Fist. That definitely looks cool. So practicing that, I definitely want to continue that with the green. So easy step now as we just want to build up Sons of Horus Green over this pre-highlight. Sons of Horus Green is it's a weird colour. I'm getting used to it on how to use it but it's just so translucent that, I don't know, it's good in a way because it's easy to glaze and things like that, but it is kind of hard to get a nice base coat with, so, hmm, I don't know why. 
but uh, adding black to it and adding the green sky for it for the highlight does make it more opaque but when you're doing this kind of uh, middle tone it does take a lot of layers to get it nice and opaque and, and that's just down to the weird properties that paint has. So eventually you get a nice opaque coat. You can see I didn't really keep much of the pre-highlight. It's subtly there, but I really want to get the shading from the mixes uh, of black. So I just add a little bit of black to Sons of Horus Green. And this is where it's actually advantageous that it's translucent because even with black, you can very easily create nice gradients. You know, black's so opaque and it can obliterate stuff, but the mix of the two of them does give you some nice control. And I definitely have developed a preference for uh, adding the dark color after. That's because you can basically dilute it further than normal and get a much smoother gradient, just going translucent uh, dark colors and then darkening and darkening until you get it right. And because all of those colors are very well diluted, you avoid the speckling that you would get from airbrushing sometimes with thicker paints. You can start off with a tiny bit of black added to get it going and then add a little more black as you go if you want and just keep pushing the shadows until you're happy. Now we're going to apply some highlights and this is with Green Sky from Vallejo. I recently discovered that AK make a green sky and they seem to airbrush a little better. So maybe if you don't own this color, I'd recommend picking up the AK one. I'm gonna try it out and see if there's any difference, but it doesn't look like it. Now this is quite hard to control because the green sky just a little bit added to the Sons of Horus will affect it drastically. So again, just add a little bit to Sons of Horus green and try a highlight out and then perhaps keep adding it gradually until you get the contrast you want. I'm not gonna use any pure green sky. You can push the highlights quite bright, but always have a little Sons of Horus green in there because yeah, green sky is very pale and very powerful. Like we said, when we looked at the plates, we're really only focusing on highlighting the chest area and then doing some cool lights on the Kerry's assault cannon barrel the fist and just the front parts of the shins actually so kind of the backs of them we're leaving so go sparing with the highlight you need this bright color for the contrast but you don't need a large volume of it so what happened to me is when i airbrushed the green sky highlights they took up too large a proportion of the model so i actually needed to reduce the size of these highlights and i do think it's easier to you know, slim down the highlights with a darker color and get them really fine in the first place. So I go back to my Sons of Horus green now, heavily diluted, and I start to glaze in and reduce the size of those green sky highlights. So I'm trying to spray at a point where it doesn't hit all of the highlight, but it does slim them down a little bit. Maybe you could skip out doing the uh, shading of black uh, that I did earlier and actually do this bit first and then go into the black sort of shading after. And I say that because I had to actually reapply this shadow again. So it's kind of like I wasn't able to get the highlights small enough with the airbrush with green sky. So I had to cut in and make them smaller and reapply it. But none of it took too long. So I don't mind this back and forth process. But maybe a more efficient way would be Sons of Horus all over highlight the green sky, then glaze the Sons of Horus, and then glaze in the shadows with the black. Maybe that's the fastest way, but when you try this out for yourself, you'll probably uh, see how it works and find a way that gets you there. The important thing is you have the correct volumes. I'm happy with the end result, even though it was a bit back and forth, to and fro, because I've managed to get the colors correct. I've got the volumes right in the end and uh, yeah, I'm happy with the tones. So yeah, it took a little while, but the result is worth it. Whenever you do a new scheme, I really do think you have to learn how the colors work and you'll often improve it as you go along. So I imagine if I do another vehicle, I'll come up with a better process. So yeah, it just takes a while to learn different schemes. 
I blacked out most of the areas and that's because it gives us a better view of how the colour's looking. Sometimes when we have overspray and no other colours around it, it's hard to judge if we've done a good job or the colours are right and things like that. But with these black shoulder pads, knee pads, I can really tell how it's going to feel overall in the end. And actually, this was really helpful because I was like, mm, I'm not sure, but looking at the photos, I was like, okay, I've got it right. And I can compare it to the color plate at this point and see that I've got it more or less right. I really like the highlight on the chest. I really like the size of the highlight and glazing and making it smaller with the Sons of Horus green was key to that. And I'm also really happy with the placement of the shadows either side of that and uh, yeah it's just it's already sort of turning out how I wanted to and I knew the airbrushing bit would be the possibly the most frustrating because just trying to get the tone right volumes right was uh, was the foundation of this model and I knew all the weathering and brushwork would be okay if I got uh, this correct so yeah I was really happy getting to this point and everything seemed to be going okay. I don't normally recommend masking stuff. I think normally if you're having to do loads of masking, then you're probably quicker just getting in with the brush. Uh, but it was very easy to mask this off because you can just get a little bit of masking tape quickly between the shoulders. So I did do it quickly and gave the shoulders an airbrush of Eclipse Grey from Scale 75, which I love because it's matte and subtle but it would just be as easy to brush it on, I think. And actually later when we paint the shoulders, you'll see I did a lot of brush work anyway. So it wasn't super necessary, but I just thought I'd show you uh, as I did it anyway. So now we go for the transfer process, which we've covered a few times and there is a video for that. But basically everything gets a coat of gloss varnish, which I like because it's going to give it some protection, which uh, call me paranoid, but I like a bit of protection with my Forge World resin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just worth doing at this stage. I'm not going to varnish it at the end, but this will protect the main paintwork at least. Now, a funny story is I gave up Sons of Horus years ago. It was the first army I did coming back to the hobby in 20. 14, I think 2013 and I basically gave it up because I was putting the transfers on and it ruined my models like I had this weird misting around it and I was like what the hell and then I bought the shoulder pads with the detail on and they didn't match the other shoulder pads so I was just like this is awful transfers don't work the shoulder pads don't match I'm, I can't be bothered to do this they look terrible on this dreadnought I used the new Sons of Horus decal sheet but I wanted to use one of the old ones, which has the kind of more, I don't know, Egyptian looking rounded eye on that Sons of Horus symbol. I tried both out and decided to go for the old school one just because it was a little bit different and uh, it did match the, um, the plate I'm doing a little more. It's just a little curls at the end, I think. So I went through my usual transfer process that I'm very confident with, always successful with transfers since learning how to do those. Uh, I chipped them by using a knife on the black ones that are on the green. So just very carefully scratch a few uh, parts out of that. And then on the gold ones, I just use black paint. Uh, so that's kind of the easiest way to get some initial damage. And it's worth doing at this point before you varnish it again. Then I went to varnish it all up and I'm using AK ultra matte varnish because I wanted that really super matte look for this model. It's not for everyone. It will desaturate your colors and make them look very flat, but that is what I wanted for this project. Now, all the decals worked apart from the old one that I'd used. And this is the exact problem I had uh, how many years ago, six years ago or something like that. And it kind of felt good to me because I was like, it must be these old transfers. And I remember doing a class uh, when we used to teach people uh, doing this stuff and it happened to them as well. So maybe there's something weird with this transfer sheet. Who knows? Um, either way, it was nice in a way that <laughs> it was, uh, you know, not my fault back in the day, perhaps. But this represented a real problem because I had this horrible effect on probably my favorite part of the model, the chest area. 
I tried varnishing it a couple more times to rescue it, but alas, it was here to stay. It's also possible maybe the microsol wasn't quite dry, but I left it overnight. So either way, I had to resolve it. So I decided that I would brush on the highlights again, which is fine. I knew I could save it, but phew, it's going to take me quite a while. So I mixed up a colour and I tested it to make sure it was just a little bit lighter, if anything. You're never going to get an exact match to something you've airbrushed in many layers. So I made like a slight highlight colour. But I thought I'd take advantage of this because I wanted to get a lot of texture and extra feel into the dread anyway. Airbrushing is obviously perfectly smooth. And when we looked at the plates, it was the texture that was key. The volumes of the highlights, but also the texture. So I basically did some stippling highlights to try and blend it in with the airbrush work. And that actually added to the model, I think. So I kept pushing that, getting the highlights a little brighter. And I used glazes with Sons of Horror screen to blend it in. But in the end, I was really happy with the result. I think it's better than it being just airbrushed on. Uh, I did intend to do this anyway, but it did force my hand uh, on this section. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Mm, I still think I'd rather it not happen, to be honest. But with the success of rescuing it, I decided to add some additional brushwork to the green to all the other areas. And so I did some chips and scratches with Sons of Horror screen over the shadowed areas. So basically what we're going to be doing is adding many layers of weathering. So subtle scratches will just be with the armor color essentially. So we'll use uh, Sons of Horus Green in the shadow, Sons of Horus Green with the green sky in the lighter areas, and just build lots of little teeny chips that are subtle. And then we'll do the dark brown chips for the deeper older ones later. But building all these different types of chips and scratches really does add a lot of layers and uh, it looks fantastic. I think the key for this step is to just have it a little bit brighter than the color you've airbrushed. So it's gonna be subtle marks rather than really obvious uh, scratches and stuff like that. The eyes in the art are kind of orange with a yellow highlight and I never would have done that, I don't think, if uh, I hadn't looked at this. So yeah, we're gonna go for like an orange color I started with Chimera Orange, and that's because it's got fantastic coverage. These paints are a little bit harder to get hold of, but if you can, I do recommend picking them up. They've got great coverage, especially for tricky colors like yellow and orange. I then just shaded the whole thing with Corn Red. So I got Corn Red in the recess around it and the top right of the eye mostly, but yeah, just kind of a a wash of corn red to darken it all down and then I reapplied the chimera orange as a first large highlight on the eye. Then I used Vallejo model color golden yellow and this has got surprisingly good coverage. I think it's better than the Games Workshop yellows for coverage so I do recommend it and if you want it really blended you can first do a mix with chimera orange or to be honest if you're neat and tidy you can go straight to the yellow. But I sort of did a big highlight at the front and then a little spot of colour at the back of the eye. Then I decided to push the brightness just at the front. So the back part would be finished with that little bit of yellow. So I added some white and just added a kind of uh, glaring highlight at the front. Again, this is just my observation of the style from the art book. I was really happy with this result. I probably wouldn't have done orange and I've not really done an eye in this style. Um, I know it's only a slight variation in the style, but I still think it looks kind of cool. And I neatened up the areas around the eye with the highlight color for the green. And you can see I also added a little bit of stippling and stuff around the head. We're not doing many edge highlights on this model, but I think a few around the face are cool just to make it stand out and be well defined. So looking at the model now from far back, I'm pretty happy with rescuing that highlight around the chest and it's cool. The extra green texture is looking nice and those lenses are really standing out. So yeah, it's all looking pretty cool so far. And now it's time to really go for it on the weathering. So we've kind of done the 
the main detail, I guess, with the green. And now it's time to just weather it and make it seem uh, a bit more battered. So my go-to chipping color is Rhinox Hide pretty much all the time, uh, which has a lot of red in it. And for this project, I decided to use Burnt Umber from Scale 75, the artist one. And this is a much colder brown, so a lot less coloring, more neutral. And I thought it would contrast less with the green. And that's actually what I want because I'm going to really go for it on the chips. So I want them to stand out, of course. But yeah, it's that happy medium of the right amount of contrast. I'm using a detail brush, actually a 2 zero, and I'm really taking my time just to add the smallest chips I can with barely anything on the brush. Uh, I kind of went for it and did the, the main highlight on the chest here first, so you can see I'm being uh, quite reserved, just adding a couple chips, stepping back and seeing if it looks cool. You know, when you paint a really nice highlight like this, it's tempting to not damage it, but you just have to. And when it's this pale, it's going to stand out and look so cool. Then I kind of catch the edges. This is a really key bit to making it look realistic or slightly more realistic, I guess. So I'm kind of using the side of the brush to catch the edge instead of an edge highlight. And I don't do it the whole way along, but certainly for quite a lot of it. And I'm just trying to vary the size of the chips, but most of them are going to be very small and subtle. But hopefully you can see the kind of pace I'm doing these chips at. It's slow. It takes a long time, but you're kind of saving a lot of time by not doing certain other steps. You know, no edge highlights. So what you have to do in return is spend more time doing this step. Lots of texture and uh, it'll look great in the end. So here you can see I'm catching the, uh, the front there, that main part. But I'm loving the look of that highlight we did with the brush. And then with the chips on top, yeah, this is uh, this is what I wanted. So I'm a very happy boy at this point. And actually, it is time consuming, but I find this quite enjoyable. Just being careful with a detail brush. And every little chip you add just adds more story. And, uh, and it just looks fantastic, in my opinion. This was crucial to getting the look I wanted and... By the final result, it was this that I, uh, I enjoyed the most. Nice close up of the leg here. And you can see I begin by adding a nice big old chip to that highlight area at the top. And then I run it down the corner there. So, you know, really focus on all the edges to start with. And then you can add the sort of chips in the, uh, in the real estate in the middle. But certainly the edges, especially on the lower half of the model, like the legs, I don't know if there's going to be any paint left, certainly with how weathered I want it to be. So I could almost, instead of edge highlighting, have every edge with some brown on it. Just make sure it's really nice and thin, because if it's too chunky, uh, it will look a bit silly. And that's why the hairspray technique is so popular, because you can get very fine lines. I'm doing it this way instead, but I'm having to be careful with the brush. And yeah, just on these edges, they're sharp enough so I can actually use the side of the brush like that. And then they're going to look really fine and realistic. But uh, yeah, this is cool. And you can see on the side there the kind of brush marks I did with the green. I don't think that looks that good on that side, but I can cover some of those up with the brown at this point. So uh, I think it will look okay in the end. Adding lots of chips to the feet. There should be barely any paint left on there. But yeah, every edge of the feet, I think I'm going to add uh, the brown to. So I'm kind of going around hitting up the edges first. That's taking priority where it should be weathered. And then adding a couple chips to balance the whole thing. But again, just like the torso, you can see I'm kind of thinking and taking my time just adding these little chips. And starting to get a lot of uh, information on there. You can see the, the green highlights, the brown chips, and it's starting to look uh, visually uh, interesting as it's getting busier rather than just plain green. Adding a few chips to the head, again, super important. You could leave that nice shiny highlight alone. Basically, I need to do this process over the entire model. I didn't know how much of this to show you because, you know, uh, I spent hours on this, to be honest. I did it in a, a couple sessions. You know, when I had a spare hour, I just chipped the arm or the leg and things like that. So I think I had three separate sessions 
to doing just the chipping, but ultimately it was one of the most important parts to uh, getting the look I wanted. But it was nice in a way because when I didn't have much time to paint, I didn't need to get many paints out, just had my burnt umber and just did a couple dots. If you make any mistakes, you can get the green and, and cover that up as well. And, and because you're doing this textured look, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can cover up mistakes and things like that. It's very forgiving, uh, very fun. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan, as you can uh, probably tell. So here we have another photo check. So it's been quite useful on this project to take photos at various steps. I think this is the shot I uh, put on social media of a work in progress. And yeah, I was really happy with the look of it at this point. The green highlight on the chest definitely looks better than the airbrushed part, uh, when it's just airbrushed rather. So I think the brushwork made a huge difference and the weathering is so important. Just a few little brown dots and it changes the entire feel of the model. So yeah, at this point I was like, okay, it's on. I'm loving this as much as Malagurst. Uh, this is exactly what I was going for. And I knew when I did things like oil paint weathering, like doing drips and stuff, it would take it even further. So I got to this point in the project and I was excited, I guess, to get the final result. And I knew I didn't have any hard processes left, just, you know, some time and, uh, and things like that. I thought I'd work on the Kerry's Assault Cannon now and I didn't want to do it silver. I was like, why do we always do these things silver? And I did some googling and looked at a bunch of mini guns and stuff like that and my favorite image was this one and the barrels were kind of like a, a gray I'm not an expert on these things so I don't know if it's a material that's raw or it's painted or whatever but either way it wasn't silver silver so I wanted to do uh, a, a gray color for sure but I wanted it to be different from the other black areas like the shoulders so I highlighted the barrels with petroleum grey from Scale 75. It's a lovely colour. It's just subtly a little bit purple, a little bit oily. So it is different from the blue kind of eclipse grey. Subtly, but ultimately uh, worth it. And you can see I'm doing a long, broad highlight following the volume of that cylinder. And actually where my light from above is hitting that plain black, you can kind of see where you need to go anyway. So I'm kind of doing a almost stippling motion, just nice and careful, but just painting that long highlight across the top of it. And this color isn't particularly light, so you can do this highlight pretty wide. As long as you can see a little bit of black either side from that main view, then it's gonna look great. I also added this to the ammo box and I did some texture. You can see it's barely different from the black. You can just see it when it's dried. So you can afford to add quite a few different brush marks here and it's not going to uh, be too drastic, but a nice uh, little subtle effect. Now it's dried, you can see the highlight a lot clearer than when I was brushing it on earlier. And I'm just adding a little rainy gray, which is in the same vein. It's got a lot of brown in it, so it's a lot more earthy than the colder greys that I'll use on the shoulders. And I'm doing the same thing, but doing a smaller highlight just down the centre. It's all very subtle. We're not looking for a shiny black effect, but yeah, we just need a little more highlighting. So I just take my time to build that up. Got a little more rainy grey in the mix now, and that looks a bit too bright, but we'll see what it's like when it's dry. But yeah, I'm just going to continue building up these highlights until I think I have enough contrast. If you paint a highlight on that's too bright like this, just add a bit more petroleum gray in the mix and then you can just come back to it. And I can sort of cover that over. You can see again the pace and I'm taking my time just building this up. It's not a perfect line, it's got little scratches in it so there will be some uh, subtle texturing. I found this new color called AK Reddish Gray and I picked it up to do non-metallic steel actually because it's got a little bit of that kind of earthy tone to it which is really great for that. And this highlight I was very careful and I just added it to a certain point in the barrels actually so that kind of um, third quarter maybe. So I didn't do this highlight around the, uh, the entire length of the barrel, just tried to draw the eye to one point but quite subtle. 
and then I also caught a couple of the edges here again building it up with scratches and texture and you can see these greys aren't particularly dark, uh, dark aren't particularly light they're quite soft but I love the look of it I'm really happy with the feel of that uh, assault cannon colour and different colour here on the shoulder pads but the same technique so I get my eclipse grey and add some texture which you can see I've done and then I just add a little bit of neutral grey and build it up in the same way here I actually tried edge highlighting and I really didn't like the look of it so I ended up removing it like I edge highlighted all of these shoulders and I think it was actually detrimental to the look we were going for so uh, in the end I just had some brown and some silvers on the edges which you'll see to blend these highlights in I took my black really heavily diluted it so it was maybe 10 parts water or something like that and I did a glaze where I push the pigment to the top of the shoulder pad so just to soften and uh, and uh, bring in those highlights and the other thing that was nice was it kind of filtered the gold decals so you have to be careful because you don't want to obliterate these decals and the color but that bright gold does stand out so a very subtle very thin little black glaze over the top can just bring it down slightly and help it be more coherent uh, with the model and the black itself but definitely exp uh, experiment with that and go easy I also made sure to add the grey markings to match the green markings so we just took that eclipse and neutral grey and added a few little dots and scratches to the top just to match the feel and texture then same as the green we did the brown chips and it's not really going to show up very well because you know brown on black but it needs to be there and it's kind of cool that it's subtle because you won't be able to tell from afar but if you look up close you'll see little dots of brown and things like that and it looks good where you go into the highlights of the light grey so it is worth it you could actually add a slightly lighter brown like you could use Rhinox Hide here instead of the burnt umber but I kind of like it so uh, use your taste and uh, change it to what you like the look of. I did do another coat of AK Ultra Matte at this point just to get the black really flat and blend it all together and this is probably the last time I will varnish it as we're going to do some oil paints and we're going to do some metallics next and I want these finishes to be different to everything else but for the black I really like the look of the AK Ultra Matte on it uh, it's not for everyone like I said but yeah really really matte black is cool I think on to the oil weathering now and yeah I'm excited for this bit I love oil paints I know how good it's gonna look when this is done so yeah this is a, a real fun step for me and I know I can mess around and and it can't go too wrong the key color for me was raw umber and again, a bit like the burnt umber for the chips, this is a subtle colour. When it dries on black, you can just see it like a light cold brown. But for me, that's perfect. We're going to use this raw umber in uh, a few different ways. So uh, we're going to use it neat. So just having it on the cardboard and then with a detail brush, obviously an old detail brush for your oils. I'm going to put a few little dots in important places. Using it neat means I've got loads of control because it's thick so I can kind of apply the dot to the exact place which is important when it's on things like the chest here so I just want a little bit of paint under the rivets going through that nice light and uh, yeah just go easy on this because it is very uh, very thick and powerful. And then I clean my brush off and I have some Sans Odor on the brush and uh, I just use that to fade these drips away. If you don't like what you've done then you can completely remove them just by carefully using the, uh, the Sans Odor. So I use the thick dots uh, for drips and stuff like that but the second way I use it is as a wash so you can mix up uh, loads of different washes at varying thicknesses. Uh, you know you can do a really subtle really pale one as a filter but I do a sort of heaviest wash and this is to go in the recesses of all the moving parts and stuff like that and like I said the color doesn't stand out massively on the black but that means you can go heavy-ish on the wash 
and when it's dried around those rivets, I absolutely love the effect. It's kind of hard to tell when you're new to this and you don't know what it looks like in the end, so have an experiment, but I think when it's dry after a few hours, it looks super cool. So I just kind of go around the model, adding streaks, adding washes, and you can really vary the, uh, the effects of the streaks. So you can have really obvious ones that are thick, and you can dilute the paint a little more and fade it out to have subtle ones. And this is the beauty of the oils, because when you dilute them down, it's really hard to beat the, you know, how it dries and how translucent it is, and it just looks more realistic. So I said it before in my Krieg video, but if you haven't tried oils before, I just really recommend it. It's enjoyable, the effect is hard to beat, it's just an amazing uh, tool to have in your hobby arsenal, and I always look forward to using them. I got a bit excited and wanted to do the oils, but it's quite important that you have some oils over your metallic work, because it looks great. So I thought, okay, that's one round of oils, I better do the metallics now, because there might be some areas of metallics where I want to do an oil wash. So I grabbed my Iron Warriors paint, my trusty Iron Warriors, and uh, like I said earlier, we are going to hit some of the edges with this. So I quite like, instead of edge highlights, having the damage. And some of that damage is going to be old, and that's going to be represented with the brown paint. But then it's also nice to have fresher scratches with this silver. So not on all of the edge, but on certain parts I just catch a little bit of silver and, and have some little scratches and stuff as well. I barely used any silver on the entire model, so this does stand out, but I absolutely love it, particularly on the black. I then dry brushed the exhausts on the back with Iron Warriors, and I think dry brushing is the right technique for this. You notice I use my detail brush, and I'm very careful with the dry brush. So it's just kind of, you won't, you won't hurt your brush if you're using it in this way, you're just carefully uh, caressing it with the Iron Warriors. Then I wanted to add some more oil paints, and this time it was going to be some rust. So I used Burnt Sienna, which is obviously uh, very orange. And again, I did the same thing, doing some controlled streaks on certain rivets, and then some light washes that would just cling around little rivets and things like that. I used this far more sparingly because it's not as subtle as the raw umber. And I will say that by the end, I prefer the raw umber. I could take or leave this orange, but it does look cool in certain points. Again, it shows up better on the black, but I love the raw umber, so hmm. Maybe when I do my next Sons of Horus vehicle, I'll still use this, but yeah, it was the, uh, the raw umber paint that did it for me. I definitely think there were a couple little areas with this extra rusty orange colour. Again, adds one more level of interest and depth, and uh, it's all these multiple layers of weathering that make it convincing, you know, not just one type of weathering. It all adds together to make that whole picture that's... Uh, realistic and just cool. There was a couple bronze elements I wanted to do, so there's the uh, the bullet casings for the carries, I mean I'm guessing that's what this bit is, and I used Pro Acryl bronze for this. I think Warp Lock bronze from GW is pretty similar, but I love these Pro Acryl paints. I know they're hard to get hold of, so uh, don't worry if you can't, but I'm a big fan. I didn't highlight them at all, I just let this metallic do its work, just nice and neat. I do a little wash if I make a mistake and get it in the recess and just highlight it up again. But yeah, just nice clean metallics uh, for these simple parts. I used my Peridot Alchemy from the Malagas tutorial to highlight the Sons of Horus coin things that I added. Uh, I don't know why they have them, but I know it's a Sons of Horus thing, so... I'm getting really into my Sons of Horus, so maybe I'll uh, read a bit of the background or uh, I'll give Henry a ring. He's good on that stuff. I am not. And I have this little piece of cloth uh, coming across here, and that was just done with Barracknar Burgundy, and then a teeny highlight of just some white added to it. This doesn't need to be a big deal, just a little bit of cloth. The Forge World Masterclass books have been out for years now. I've owned them for years, and I have to say, I've not really done many of the tutorials from them. When I bought them, to be honest, I felt it was way out of my skill set. It was like, 
you need an airbrush and some Johnson's clear and all this and that. And I was like, whoa, but I was very new to the hobby. So I totally get it. If you feel the same way sometimes where you watch a tutorial and it's like, you need this, this and this, but there was one thing I was gagging to try when I was uh, younger in my hobby career. And that was these exhausts that they did on, uh, on this tank. And I read it and I thought, yeah, that sounds all right, but no, I'm not trying that. It looks incredible. So uh, Phil is just an absolute legend. I love his work. So this is fully inspired and copied from that tutorial. I take no credit for it, but I thought, yeah, this will be fun to try out something. Uh, one, that looks fantastic, and two, that I was afraid to try. So let's give it a go. In the tutorial, it says to use mithril silver. I definitely don't have any of that, but I do have these dark star paints, which are pretty cool. And there was a bright steel, which I thought looked quite unusual. It had a little, a couple red bits of fleck in that. So I very carefully and gradually dry brushed up the exhausts. And I was quite happy with the look of that. Just dry brush nicely. And with this fantastic quality paint, it looked pretty cool. It also says to use red and purple inks to slightly uh, tint the color of this exhaust. And this is definitely why it looks so awesome. So I do have some inks, but they weren't to hand, but I did have my contrast paints. And I thought on what result we can get out of these contrast paints. So I diluted uh, some Magos purple and the Flesh Terrors red with the contrast medium, probably about 50-50, something like that. Just a bit of medium. And I did this in little patches. So I did one round where I did some patches with the purple and the second round I added a couple patches of the red in places that were left plain silver. I really like how this turned out. You've got to dilute the contrasts and just apply a little bit so it's subtle, but I think it's really cool. I think I'm going to do this again on some bigger exhausts and take a bit more time with it, but yeah, that tutorial is just awesome and uh, I want to do some more from that book for sure. But yeah, really happy with how these exhausts turned out, uh, especially since I have very few silver bits. It was nice to do uh, something cool and, uh, and different for these exhausts. I think the key is don't be afraid to try anything like you guys are watching a tutorial by me. So maybe you get the same feeling, but I was definitely like, oh, that's too hard for me, this tutorial. Uh, back in the day, but now I've got a lot more confidence. But all I can say is just go for it, have some fun. So I don't know how many of you will be adding this wolf pelt to your dreadnoughts, but here is a great fur recipe anyway, which you could use for something else. I used the burnt umber, which we use for the battle damage, and I mixed with it, you guess it, some uh, goby brown. If you've seen any of my videos, you've seen this paint before, I am sure. But yeah, really natural, nice brown, especially when mixed together. And with this, I'm not trying to pick out the individual bits of fur, just big chunky bits, you know. Leave a bit of the shadow on the left or the underside, but just try and pick out the main clumps of fur. I then pick it out with pure goby brown. And again, we're sort of picking out a bit more detail, but it's more about how the light's hitting the fur rather than getting the sculpted detail. You know, all the sculptors do loads of detail on fur and if you do it all, it's a pain in the ass, and I don't think it looks that good. So I'm kind of painting it more clumpy to get the, the general or the far view looking good. And then I use that reddish brown color I used for the assault cannon again, just because it's a gray with some brown, some red in it. It's really natural and it's just perfect for this. It's going to make sure that the... Uh, the pelt doesn't stand out, but when you do look at it, it's a nice color. It's nice and natural. I think so anyway. And for the black claws, I just did a little sharp highlight this time with, again, the reddish brown. So I don't want to draw attention to here, but it needs to be painted and have the detail. So just one really neat sharp highlight can look great. And with those small details complete, that is the Dreadnought finished. And looking at these final photos, I am so happy with the outcome. I hope you like the look of it too. Like we said at the start, I think the key or what to focus on was lots of small, subtle textures. 
on the green, the black, lots of weathering. The build-up of all those different processes makes it really visually interesting and textured, but I don't think, you know, too busy. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just really happy with it. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have this image in my head that I really want to achieve, and it's hard to do that, and I don't always do it, but this one, I think, came out better than I imagined, which is... It's actually kind of rare for me. Uh, I'll be interested to see what you think of that statement from me there. I learnt a lot about adding different texture in a subtle way. So just small dots, small scratches in lots of different colours. So the green ones, the brown chips, and then all the different levels of oil streaks and oil washes. All of that added together to do this really cool uh, model and uh, yeah this is why I love weathering so much it feels uh, grim dark it feels realistic it suits a an evil evil I don't know the chaos eventually a legion like sons of Horus and just generally that Harris the aesthetic I think just being a bit more gritty I think I could go in and add a few more details add a few more chips you know just keep repeating the processes we've done but I thought this was a good stopping point for the tutorial and uh, you guys need to see a video eventually so but yeah I might just add a few more marks a few more chips you know in a in certain areas but that's definitely all the processes that I want to do for this dreadnought. I've enjoyed this and Malagust so much that the temptation to do more is just massive so if we do get the rumoured plastic Spartan, yeah, it's going to have to be Sons of Horus because this colour is so fun to do and I think weathering looks amazing over the light green. So, yeah, give me some encouragement. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe I'll do some more Sons of Horus. But every time uh, I do a tutorial, you're like, oh, I wonder if I can do an army of this. So, yeah, got to be sensible sometimes. I really hope that you like the look of this model as much as I do and as always I hope that you've learnt something or taken some ideas and I hope I've encouraged you to you know try a more weathered look if that's something that you don't normally do. If the weathered look is nothing new for you then hopefully you've taken some new bits home and, and hopefully seeing the entire process has been good for you. I'm going to do one more part for this and it's going to be painting the banner and the base. So most of the video will be the banner but I'll do the base for that part as well. But I thought it would be nice to just have the dreadnought completed in one video. As always, looking forward to your thoughts uh, about this dreadnought, about any of the processes. Please let me know the bits you did like and the information that was most useful. That feedback helps me in future videos. And uh, yeah, until next time, maybe we'll do more Sons of Horus, maybe we'll do Abaddon, who knows? But I will see you very soon.